Okay, now we've done the basic software setup, and in that we uh, set the sub trims for the servo horns so that they uh, run horizontal like that. We can now level up the swash plate. How I like to do that is using the uh, zip tie method, which I'll just demonstrate here. Basically, we hook us uh, a cable tie around the main shaft between the swash plate and the uh, rotor holder. Whoops, difficult like so. And then we take the snips and just cut it so that it's just slightly longer than the ball links, like that. Okay, so now we've got, as you can see, the cable tie in position. Just let me alter the camera slightly. And we can rotate it slowly around the head. And it gives a good indication as to which arms are longer than the other. So let's just get it in position so it just touches. There we go, it's in position so that it just touches the uh, link rod end as it passes it. See that one, look, it's quite a way off. And the rear one, it's also quite a way off. So what we need to do is we need to unhook this servo arm here and reduce its length slightly. So let's do that. We'll just unhook it and we'll turn it clockwise. I don't know, a couple of clockwise turns. Like so, put it back on. Okay, let's just bend our cable tie down so it's almost touching. Right, it's almost touching. Let it go past the rear one. That's a lot closer. And that one, it's quite a way off. So. And you carry on like that. You shorten whichever one um, the cable tie is closest to to make it more like the others. And eventually you'll get them all the same. Okay, I've adjusted uh, some of the link rods and uh, this is the result now. So just watch the uh, cable tie as it goes round. It's just going to miss that link rod end and now let's move rotate the head further and as we pass the uh, elevator link rod end it just misses that and now round to the front one again the uh, aileron and it just misses the top of that link rod end so I think that's a, a fairly level swash plate in fact I'll pretty much guarantee that if it's set up like that when you come to hover the helicopter, the uh, trim will be pretty darn close, no more than a couple of clicks away. And clicks, I mean, on the software. Do not use the transmitter to trim the helicopter. Use the software settings, uh, the, the trims page. Okay, so I'm just going to now remove the uh, cable tie with the snips. Can't leave it on there, of course. Can't get it. Okay, off she comes. And our next task is to set up zero pitch um, when the uh, servos are at the mid stick position. So, to do that, we're going to put the blades back on 
and we're going to adjust these adjustable link rods to make uh, to lengthen or shorten the rods so that we get zero pitch. Not forgetting of course to uh, replace the uh, screws on the uh, servo arms. There we go, mustn't forget those. Okay, I've temporarily put the blades back on. What we're going to do now is um, with the swash level and the servo arms horizontal uh, in other words, that's the mid-stick position for idle up. We're going to set up zero pitch on the blades. So what I've done is uh, I've clamped my pitch measurer onto the blade. And I've also pinned, it's like a blank printed spreadsheet to the wall behind me level. And as you can see, with the uh, top of the uh, pitch measurer level with one of the lines on the grid behind it, you can see that uh, I've not quite got zero pitch set right. I've actually got two and a half degrees of positive pitch set up. So we need to adjust that. And how we're going to adjust that is uh, quite nice and straightforward with these tarot adjustable linkages I've installed on this helicopter. We um, just take the little Allen key that comes with the kit and we insert it into here and we twist. Now it's a little bit of trial and error to find which is the right way or not. Uh, so I'll give it two full clockwise twists. and uh, hopefully that will have shortened this rod and reduced the amount of positive pitch on the blade we're interested in. Let's have another look. Okay, so I've just re-straightened the uh, top of the pitch measurer and we now have about one and a half degrees of positive pitch on that blade. So I need to uh, adjust the linkage, perhaps a couple, two or three more clockwise turns and we'll see where we are then. Okay, I've uh, made some adjustments and now let's take another look at the uh, pitch gauge. Okay, so the pitch gauge top is level and I've got zero pitch. Now we need to do the other blade. Okay, so I've made the adjustments to the second blade now. And uh, as you can see, looking at the pitch gauge, lines up nicely with the grid. And take the reading, and we've got zero pitch. Now set for mid sticks on both blades. Okay, so now let's have a look at the pitch range. Right, as you can see by the transmitter in the background, we're roughly at mid sticks. Um, looking down the blade to my grid in the background, you can see that the uh, top of the pitch gauge is roughly level with the um, grid, and at mid sticks we have zero pitch. This is a good sign. OK, now let's apply maximum collective, like so, and realign the top of our pitch gauge to the uh, grid behind it, which is roughly like that, and we've got, right, that's aligned, and we have exactly 10 degrees of positive pitch. That's a good start. So we'll leave that well alone and just have a look at negative collective. Just line the gauge up again. That's pretty good. 
and we've got 10 degrees of negative pitch. I like that setup, so I'm going to leave that alone, not make any more adjustments in the software. Okay, back to zero pitch. Okay, now let's have a look at the blade deflection for the aileron. We see the transmitter. So I'm going to apply maximum right aileron. Level the gauge again, and we've got about, looking at that, an 8 to 8.5 degree blade deflection. That's a little high, so I'm going to go back into the uh, ZYX software and alter the blade deflections down a little bit. I think they were set to 80. Past experience tells me for a 450 helicopter with the inner lab cyclic servos, 60 is a good value. So I'm just going to pop into the software and do that, and we'll take that measurement again. In fact, let's just double check with left aileron. Yeah, it's down at 9, so uh, that's too much. For gentle flight, a blade deflection of 6 or 7 is pretty good, and uh, a pitch range of plus 10 to minus 10 is okay. If you're a 3D pilot, uh, which I'm not, uh, 3D pilots sometimes go for a pitch range of plus 12 to minus 12, and blade deflections 7 or 8. Um, so, use those figures as you see fit. Okay, so I've plugged in the USB to the computer, followed by the USB to the ZYX gyro, relaunch the program. I'm going to click on connect, and I'm going to load up my file, which is this one here, HK450GT FBL. Open, I'm now going to go into the setup. And I'm going to go straight to Swash Travel. Okay, and I'm going to reduce the aileron travel down to 60 and the elevator travel down to 60. And then I'm going to retake my uh, blade deflection measurements. So I've done that, I could click Finish. Save my file. Overwrite. And then I can exit the program. Unplug the lead from the gyro. And go and take my measurements again. Okay, so with the blades running parallel to the tail boom, now let's double check our aileron blade deflection. So let's apply maximum right aileron. Okay, line up the pitch gauge to the grid. And as you can see, we've now got a blade deflection of just over six. That's, uh, that's perfect. So let's uh, go for, shoot for the left. Again, it's six and a half. Perfect. Happy with that. What we can also do is we can rotate the helicopter round. So I just have to move the transmitter. And obviously have a look at the... Uh, elevator throws. Okay. So let's apply maximum forwards and as you can see there we have got a blade deflection for the elevator of 6 degrees let's just try backwards elevator and it's a little difficult for me to do a 
perfect reading, but that says seven. So that's good enough for me. So uh, that's the blade deflection drive, or how I want them. Okay, one of our final pre-flight checks is um, we need to check for binding. So uh, we've got all the helicopter set up software-wise, and uh, yeah, so let's plug it in. And whilst it's initialising, I'll just explain the issue. The swash plate with high levels of negative pitch and aileron and elevator input can often bind on the collar or particularly the grub screws. So we need to check that that doesn't happen. Um, it was the reason why when building the helicopter I um, suggested that we uh, got the link rods as long as possible. Okay, so let's just have a look. It's switched on. I'm going to apply maximum negative pitch. And to start with, I'm going to apply maximum negative elevator. And I'm going to get the hold of the head and just rotate it and make sure at no point does it bind. Then I'm going to do aileron. So that's maximum right aileron. And then I'm going to shoot for, there's no binding there shoot for the diagonals. K. I just try all the corners of my cyclic inputs and there's no binding and I'm really pleased with that. That's something that you must check. Um, very important. You don't want any binding in flight. You want to check the other extremes just to make sure that the head feels smooth and there's no binding anywhere that's also a good idea okay we're at a fairly advanced stage now and I'm going to suggest that we plug it in without the blades and spool up the motor so uh, transmitters on and ready let's plug in the battery Okay, let it do its initialization and its initialization is complete after the tail servo goes side to side to side. Okay, red light on, that means the gyro is in heading hold tail mode. I'll just switch, flick the gear switch, blue light would mean red mode. Okay, so back to heading hold, it doesn't really matter. And what I'm going to suggest here is just to spin it up to half throttle. Spin it up to half throttle and make sure everything's good. Have a good look round the helicopter. Make sure nothing's vibrating. The vertical stabilizers, the fins, the boom support. Make sure that they're all smooth. Touch the frame, perhaps, carefully. And of course the tail. Be ever so careful. Just make sure. Just make sure there's no unusual vibrations. The um, I'll switch that off now. The Taro ZYX is incredibly vibration sensitive, and. Uh, You'll get a lot more out of it if you've got a smooth heli. So if you feel any unusual vibrations, um, you need to sort it now. Investigate and uh, correct. Okay, now I like to run it like that for a couple of 10 minute bursts and then go around and check every single screw. Um, you can't be too careful. Particularly check the head that we've just built uh, the uh, feathering shaft bolts make sure that they're nice and secure and haven't worked loose. It's good that it goes wrong in the bench test rather than out at the field. So uh, yeah, take your time and go over every screw methodically and carefully. Next we'll put the blades back on and look at the blade tracking. Okay, I've put the main blades on and uh, ensured that they're well balanced both uh, in, in terms of absolute weight and that they're dynamically balanced 
that means the center of gravity is um, the same for each blade they pivot if you put them on a pencil side by side they uh, the pivot point is the same um, and uh, yeah we're ready to have a look at the blade tracking now now I suggest you do this um, before the maiden flight because the gyro is so vibration sensitive that uh, blade tracking out um, obviously causes a vibration and it's not what you want in your maiden so it's worth trying to set it up like this now um, yeah so I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to spool it up and uh, observe and uh, then make an adjustment on the uh, adjustable linkages to correct the blade tracking so let's have a look at that just before I start actually I'm just going to say it's securely strapped down to a catalogue that uh, if I pick it up the catalogue comes with it so uh, yeah very well strapped down right let's plug it in okay that's uh, plugged in now uh, let's spool her up Okay, I don't know how well that showed to the camera, but the blade tracking was actually pretty good. I'm uh, pleased with that. Okay, we've got the main blades on, the tail blades and the canopy. There's just one last little check to make before we can go and uh, try a maiden flight. And that's just uh, have a look at the centre of gravity. The centre of gravity is really important because uh, it affects how the helicopter flies. And without a good centre of gravity, we can't really trim the bird out very well so let's have a look I've got a battery installed in the flight position we'll put the canopy back on and all I'm going to do is hook my fingers under the blade grips and observe the skids and whether they remain parallel to the bench or not so let's have a look that's pretty good Have another look. Yeah, that's a bit lucky. I don't need to move the uh, battery backward or forward to make the centre of gravity right. Um, yeah, so uh, just remember in the maiden that any trimming is done through the software, not the transmitter. Okay, so we're now very close to our maiden flight. Um, what I've done now though is I've reconnected to the uh, software and I'm just going to go through some of the uh, parameters and options some of the things we need to know before the maiden uh, and uh, what to expect really okay so I'm just going to uh, connect jobs are good in, and I'm just going to open up my particular config file okay so the first thing I want to mention really is the 3d soft setting why I've chosen that um, well the 3d soft it's more stable in this setting than a flybar helicopter without the flybar weights but with ordinary flybar paddles carbon fiber blades this setting as it stands is much more stable than that so it's a good starting point for even um, fairly junior pilots in the scheme of things and that combined with uh, say 20% or the manuals recommended 40% expo on the cyclic channels in your radio and uh, yeah you'll, you'll really notice the extra stability so that's a good starting point actually okay so that's that right now some of the things, agility, we'll leave agility as it is, that's just you know how agile the helicopter is in flight, the default values of that are fine. 
Gain. We need to talk about the roll gain and the pitch gain. Now this is where it's time for us to be honest really and hold the hands up about the quality of the servos we have installed. The usable gains for a 450 helicopter seem to be in the region of 28 to 40 on this page. Um, if we have got good quality fast digital servo servos 35 or 40 will suffice. If you're using cheap digital servos such as the Hobby King brands, the Corona brands you know the six dollar digital servos then nearer 30 for the roll and pitch gain seems to be on the money and if you're using cheap analog servos we're talking now you've the orange Hobby King servos the uh, HXT 900s that sort of thing a starting point for the gain of 25 may be in order. This helicopter, as you know, I've fitted in a lab servos. They are good quality digitals. I'm going to start with 35. So I'm just going to alter this to 35. And you should do the same to the pitch and the gain. Sorry, the pitch and the roll should be set the same. As far as the tail rotor goes, Leave that as it is, leave the gain on 100 because you're going to be setting it through the gear channel on your transmitter. The yaw rate, well you can tinker that with that but those starting points are pretty good. Okay so what to expect, well all going well, it's going to lift off into a hover and it's going to fly well with no sign of any shakes or wobbles. Now the number one issue with these flybarless helicopters is a, a, you lift off and you fly about and it's fine but when you start to throw it about a bit more, perhaps do a roll or something, on exiting the roll it'll either shake, a little bit like a wet dog shake, or it'll bob backwards and forwards rapidly. If you see that you've got several options, you can either reduce the roll and pitch gain further, so knock it down say five points at a time, or we could go to the advanced settings and let's just have a look at the advanced settings, so I'll click on the advanced, right so this is the advanced settings and what we've got up here is roll P gain and pitch P gain roll I gain, pitch I gain, roll D gain uh, and pitch D gain. Now these should be symmetrical so the roll and the pitch for each gain should be the same which they are at the moment. Okay what do they mean? Now I'm probably at risk of oversimplifying it here but for in one word P gain is reaction. So the gyro will know, will, will have a command or an input and it will decide from where it is now and where it needs to be the uh, rotation to where it needs to be and that's the the strength of the reaction it uses to get there. I gain in a word is that's your holding direction so in a word that's your stability um, D gain, well in a word that's moderation, so sudden stick movements, how does the gyro moderate that sudden stick movement to give you the um, response that you're expecting? Uh, those are not perfect explanations but for the sake of this video they're pretty good. So if your helicopter has the cyclic shakes and you've tried reducing the gain um, on the previous page and you're not really getting anywhere, you're reducing it to a point that your helicopter stability is suffering and you don't like it. Try putting your gain back up to the sort of 30-35 value that we've talked about and try adjusting the P gain which is the reaction. So in other words it's overreacting and you want to tame it a little bit. Knock it down say 10 at a time, don't go too low but try 70 have a test flight, try 60, have a test flight, 
and see how you go on and hopefully you'll find a happy medium but I've got to say it may be the case that your servos are just too sloppy they're too slow and you need to invest in better servos it may be the case that you need to work on your rotor head or vibrations of the helicopter um, if you've got a perfectly smooth helicopter nice tight head fast servos odds on you, do, you won't need to fiddle with the uh, PID parameters. Okay, something else worth mentioning on this page is the dead bands. That's the RC dead bands, both the main rotor and over here for the tail rotor. These are a little large. Now, what the dead band is, is it's the movement required on the sticks on the transmitter before the gyro says ah there's actually a movement there we'd better do something so a large dead band means that you could have quite a bit of a little bit of play around the center points of your sticks and nothing will happen and then you press the dead point point and lo and behold something happens that can make for a slightly clunky flight it can make for a little um, make it harder to do spot landings for example and it can make the tail seem slightly jerky so I would suggest reducing these a little bit to whatever you're comfortable with I'm just going to reduce the tail here to 40 um, it's a balancing act the dead bands are great because when you're doing aerobatics with a reasonably large dead band it makes it easier to do aerobatics because you don't get that little bit of accidental input that you sometimes do um, and corkscrew the loop for example or you know what I mean uh, just uh, skew the roll or skew the flip and with larger dead bands it c it's easier to avoid and it makes you look good actually but the, the downside is that the finer control the spot landings are a little more difficult so you got to find the happy media for that so uh, yeah that's a little look at the advanced settings it's a little bit of what to expect and how to deal with it if your helicopter has shakes uh, on the test flight okay so I'm going to click OK there and exit that um, yeah I hope that's a little a worthwhile introduction of what to expect on your test flight, your maiden flight and how to deal with the likely issues that may crop up. Okay well I'm going to go for my test flight now so uh, I'll append that to the end of this video.